guys, and welcome to another exciting Adobe Illustrator tutorial taught by yours truly, Robert. I'm here to help you learn Illustrator the right way. What I want to share with you, rather than waste your time looking at free classes on YouTube that teaches bad technique, if you're serious about learning this program the right way, I highly suggest you invest into my course. Now, here's the deal. Okay, this course is selling for $259. I respect the fact that you guys are on a budget. So here's the deal. I'm going to have a link to this course for $79. It's a limited time offer. I update this course weekly. Right now, 46 people have bought my course. I've, I go through every technique about Illustrator from 2D, 3D graphics based on my time-tested techniques. I just added a new series today for 3D graphics volume one. Again, I add to this course repeatedly. So unlike other online courses, where you pay a fee today, you pay a fee next week, you know, pay a fee next year. I'm here to help you. You pay one-time fee, you get lifetime access to my amazing Illustrator production techniques for web and print. Now, if you don't respect what I do, then I highly suggest you stop watching my channel because I'm not going to be posting a lot of free, in-depth stuff on YouTube. If you want to take advantage of what I have to offer, I'm here to help you, but help me to help you. So. This course goes for $259. Right now, if you click the link below, it will take you to the site where you can log on today, download the files for $79. Enjoy the video that's about to start now. Okay, so let's take this one step further. Now, important step here. If I hit command key Y, this is going to show me the outline mode. Now, the advantage of being here is that I don't have to re-render it. I could just basically move it, then when I command Y, then it's going to render. But if you try to change it from here, which I can do by dragging this to the left or dragging this to the right, then it's going to want to render it. So I'm going to deselect, reselect. I'm going to pull this in a little bit. I'm going to pull out a little bit, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get some very cool things happening here by adjusting it. I'm going to move this down a little bit. And now I can go inside the shape. So what's happening here, very important step here, I'm just going to move this off to the right a little bit. And I'm going to select the whole thing and move that closer to that center point. So again, what's happening here is command Y. It's taking this shape and it's revolving it from the right point. So it's taking this and it's whipping it all the way around to create that shape. Okay, so a lot of experimentation can be involved with this. Right? Now I can go to my Convert Direction Point tool by holding down the Option key Macintosh, Alt key Windows, and I can convert the direction point. Or I can convert this direction point, etc., etc. So you're going to get very different shapes based on what you select. And if I go to the back of the P for Pen tool, I can put an anchor point here. Therefore, I can take this anchor point and I can curve that. Now, once you start crossing and getting some wacky things, then wacky things are going to happen. In this particular case, I just want to take the anchor point and move it out a little bit. Now, you want to make that a square point. Again, option key, convert direction point. I click right here, and it becomes a square direction point. I do the same thing here. It becomes a square direction point, 90 degree direction point. So wherever I click, it's going to go back to whatever it's closest to, either a straight line or a curve. Now, if you want to remove an anchor point, now how is removing an anchor point different from deleting an anchor point? Well, if I delete an anchor point, I'm going to have an open path. I don't want to have an open path. I simply want to remove the anchor point. So with the pen tool, P for pen, I can click right there. It turns into a minus, and I can remove the anchor point. Now, vocabulary is very, very important. Do not confuse removing the anchor point with deleting the anchor point. This would delete the anchor point. That's not what I want to do. I want to remove the anchor point, or I want to affect the anchor point. So you're going to get some very different, here's a lampshade. So you're going to get some very different things going on here. I'm going to remove the anchor point. So if I click right here, I can delete the anchor point, right? So this shape right here can add Y, credit a cool lamp effect, lampshade. Now, again, if you want to re-rotate this, you have to go to the Appearance menu. In the Appearance menu, 3D Revolve, 
and I take the shape, make sure preview is selected, and I can go and adjust this any way I choose. Okay, and hit OK. Now I want to share with you a very powerful, very common thing to be able to do. First of all, we're going to scale this. So I go to that S for scale tool. I hit the return key. We're going to scale this at say 55% and return. And I'm just going to hide the guides, command semicolon. And I want to move this down here. And I also want to hide the edges, command edge high. Now again, if you want to change the color of this, well, I can come up here and change the color to this, this color. Okay. Now here's what I'd like to do. It's very important to understand this. I'm going to command H again. So right now, by default, it's revolving from the right edge. It's taking that center point here and revolving around the edge. Right? You with me on that? Now, if I go to the R for rotation tool and I pick a point to rotate from, and I rotate this holding on the option key to make a clone copy and the shift key to constrain it, I'm going to get a totally different shape because here's what's happening. It's now revolving this shape around the center point. You understand what's happening here? It's revolving the shape. Now, this is really a cool technique because now I can get other things I wasn't even thinking about as far as my organic shapes. So I can hit Command D and get a shape like this, and Command D and get a shape like that, and Command D. See, these are really cool technique, guys. You're not going to find someplace else. I am a total master Adobe software guy. If it's made by Adobe, I know the shortcuts. I don't care what program it is. Command D. So just by hitting Command D, look at all these different shapes I can get from that one single shape just by hitting Command D. And again, I just want to share with you what's happening. It's, it's it basically doing what it was told to do, but what evolves based on that existing shape. So let's go back a few steps, Command Z. Now, because I duplicated that, so if I, again, let's undo this, okay? So let's hit Command T. So I'm gonna pick a point to rotate from. I'm gonna rotate T here, Option key, make a clone copy. Now, whether or not you wanna hold down the Shift key, that's totally up to you. It constrains to a 45 angle. Now, just because I can, I can come up here and I can go to edit and I can lock in those colors. Now, in this particular case, I just have one color scheme, but I could basically now change those colors and the return key. Now, of course, you can do that from here as well. Command D and change the color. Command D. Command D and change the color. Command D and change the color, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so how cool is that? All right, now here's an important step here. Let's say that I do decide I like this shape, whatever, that's a flying saucer, whatever shape you want that to be, right? So let's say I do like that shape and I do want to have that shape rotated. So here's what I mean by that, okay? We're gonna basically uh, select all. In fact, if you go to the select menu, what we can do is we can select, I don't want to select all in this particular case. I'm going to hit Command A to select all, but I don't want to have this selected. So how do I do that? Command A selects all, Command Option, Command Option, Shift. Now the reason I'm holding on the Option key is so I get the whole entire path. Now technically that's not really necessary, but I'm going to hold down the Option key and turn it into a group selection tool, the Alt key for Mac or Windows. Shift key, deselect. Now this is not selected. Now I'm not sure that I like these, but I'm not sure I don't like these. I could choose at this point to put these in a separate layer. But I'm just going to go to the object menu. Anything about the object is under the object menu. And I'm going to take these and hide these selections. Now, here's my objective. I want to be able to take this shape and I want to be able to rotate exactly the shape, which means I don't want this happening. Okay, so how can I make that happen? Well, if you're going to do something like this, I highly suggest that you make a clone copy first. So I'll make a clone copy of this over to here for a second. And I don't want to affect it, so I'm going to go to the object menu. Anything about the object is under the object menu. Object lock, lock selection. Now, I want to benefit from this rotating, but not changing its perspective for revolution. 
or evolve, which is this. So how could I do that? Well, anything about an object is under the object menu. Now, where is it getting the information from? It's getting the information from the appearance menu. Right now, according to how we set this up, the appearance is revolving 3D. Well, I don't want it to revolve 3D any longer. So based on these choices, we're going to go to the object menu. And based on these choices, we're going to expand the appearance. Now it's a piece of vector command Y. Now it's a physical finished final piece with a bunch of vectors in here. Okay, totally different. Visually, they look the same, but they're not acting the same. This is still an evolved object. This is a physically expanded object because I went to the object menu and expanded the appearance. Now with it selected, now what you'll have to do here is I'm going to hold down the command key plus the option key Macintosh and I'm just going to drag to the center of this to get all the anchor points. I want to hide the edges command H high and I'm just going to scale this down a little bit scale tool return key 55% is good. Actually apparently I didn't have the whole thing selected here so I just want to do maybe something like that. Make sure the whole thing's selected. So I do return key 55% think this is just a little glitch with the program. I don't think that's actually there. Well, maybe that actually is there. All right, so let's do this. Let's just marquee the whole thing. All right, so as for scale, hit the return key, 55%. And I'm going to hold down the command key, move this to here. Now, when I go to R for rotate, and I pick a point to rotate from, it's going to physically just rotate that shape. I'm going to pick this point out here to rotate from. That's going to be my transformation point. I'm going to rotate around this way. So now I can still go and change the color. Now here's an important step. If I choose to go over here and I pick a different color, that's not what I want to have happen because it's not going to take in consideration the shading properties, the lighting properties. So what I need to do is either go to the edit menu, edit colors, Recart artwork, which we talked about before, where I can click right here. So I go to the edit menu from here. I lock in the colors and I take those colors and I shift the colors to maybe here. Pretty cool. So now I can command D, click here again, edit the colors, lock the colors, and I want to move that to here. Command D, etc., etc., etc. So now I want to take what's remaining, select all, command A, select all, go to the R for rotation tool, pick a point to rotate from, and I'm just going to rotate these down, and I'm just going to scale them. As for scale, hit the return key, 55%. Now that I have these as an object, uh, we can change this color, we're just going to leave it. Effect menu, effect stylus, drop shadow, and hit the return key. And there's the drop shadow on my simple graphics. So these production techniques are very, very important, but you need to know. See, I want you to understand and have a complete, profound understanding of the software. So as an example, I might have mentioned this before. I know I did. Okay. There's a butcher. There's a surgeon. They both use sharp instruments to cut into flesh. But guess what? A butcher is not a surgeon. Most people butcher the software because they were never taught the software. They were never taught how the software thinks. They never were taught how to squeeze the sponge on the software. A surgeon, however, masters his or her tools. A surgeon is a total master of their sharp instruments. They know what tool to pick. They know what, what knife to pick, what hemostat to pick, etc., etc., etc. So do you want to be a butcher? Do you want to be a surgeon? So follow my lead and become a surgeon. We'll talk to you in our next video.